Hello Christian sisters, Sister Debbie from Don'tPerish.com. Hey, I'm walking down the road right in front of our house in Wisconsin. We've been working pretty hard here, cleaning and selling things. Seems like the Lord's been opening up the doors for us to make some money selling a bunch of our stuff here, so that's awesome. I'm walking over to a driveway here because I want to show you something. I owe you a video on number two, how we save money, and that would be off-grid. So if you look down this driveway here, and drive about three quarters, no, a little over a quarter of a mile back there, there's a big farmhouse down there that we used to live in. And when we decided to downsize, I'm gonna show you how close it is, see our van? And see this driveway? We owned all the land back there, and there was two acres right up in this area here where the van is, with our little house on it. And it was at such an astronomically low price, we couldn't pass it up. Less than most people pay for a car. And so we bought this house, but it didn't look like this when we got it. It needed a little bit of work, and it didn't have a well or septic. So what we did was we decided not to put in running water, which means you don't have to worry about pipes freezing. You didn't have to pay the fifteen to $18,000 for the well and septic that they wanted. And we ended up living really simple but we never did take the house off the grid and off grid means that you don't have electricity so we left the electricity on here but seriously when we sold the old farmhouse back there which had a big mortgage and taxes and outbuilding upkeep hello sisters <laughs> there's brother jim um when we moved up here because we paid cash for this because it was so cheap um, and we didn't put in all the extra stuff that they wanted us to. We didn't need to. We went and checked with codes and everything. We saved ourselves thousands and thousands of dollars, which just meant we needed to do a little bit more work by hand. Hand pumping water, heating with wood, things like that. So basically, we were living here for the price of taxes, which wasn't much at all, and electricity. So that was one way we started to save money. So now I just thought I would show you right across the street they dug a big canal because there's been a lot of flooding around here. thought I'd take a walk and share the rest of it with you. So once we've moved into this place and we kind of got settled in, did our little homestead thing, and we were saving a bunch of money, you know, with the garden and raising everything on our own, well, the Lord put it on our hearts to go, to go out for Jim to proclaim the gospel, for me to be his helper. So we started looking around for another option in the central part of the United States that we could branch out 10 hours anywhere or whatever. You know, we just wanted to be out to where we could easily go out in the world, proclaim the gospel, and maybe have a place to go back in winter. Well, we started looking for off-grid property because off-grid usually means that you have no restrictions, no rules. You could live in a cardboard box if you want to. And what we wanted was something simple that did not cost a lot of investment or upkeep. So, looks like a car coming. I'm going to go stop for a minute. Okay, so what we did was we did our research and we looked around to see where there were affordable off-grid properties. And we looked in Tennessee, we looked in Missouri, and we ended up finding a really nice piece of land in Missouri for an awesome low price per acre and absolutely no regulations or anything. So for like, I think Jim said it was like $6,000, we were able to put up a house, a shop, a great big porch, some outbuildings, and it was all paid for in cash. And now here we are today, downsizing to get rid of this little house here to set us free. And down there to live, it's $20 a month on taxes. And the only other expenses we have, which would be normal expenses for living, would be maybe 6 to $8 a week on a generator to run our business and to charge our batteries. So I just share this with you. It's possible, but you know what we had to do? We had to kill our flesh. Because to end up leaving the state meant leaving everybody we knew behind us, which most people kind of left us already. But the beloved ones that we have here that we still have a little contact with were our grandchildren. And I've kind of been talking about that a little bit, but we see the time has come that they're slowly moving away in their life from us. And we are moving out into the world more to proclaim the gospel, but we'll keep in touch with them with letters and everything. And when we get a chance to see them, we will, of course. But praise the Lord, we're counted worthy, although we are not worthy, to be able to go carry the gospel truth to everybody. So we are doing everything in our power that we can possibly to save money, to set us free, to make sure we continue to stay free, to do the service of the Lord. And 
So that's why we chose going off the grid. And when you go off the grid, it also means you save a lot of money in many different ways because you have very few conveniences and you also realize you need a lot less. You know, you're not living in air conditioning. You don't have a heater that kicks on in the middle of the night. You have to get up and stoke the wood stove or you turn the generator on for a fan. You know, if you want some of the comforts, you can still have some of them. But we try to live without a lot of the comforts so we could save the money to be, like I said, set free for the Lord. There you go, a simple way that we saved a whole bunch of money, and by doing this, we'll save us much money in the future. And I'm not saying everybody has to go off the grid, but we have run into believers who say, wow, I would love to be set free from my worldly job, my mortgage, all the trappings of the world, my toys, I've buried myself in all kinds of things. How do I get out? And that's where we tell people, Think a little more drastic and think of how big our God is. You may need to leave what you're used to and downsize to do something like we did. It's, it's possible. It's capable out there. And so here I sit. You're probably wondering what I'm doing. I'm sitting in. I'm going to show you real quick. We haven't done our van or anything yet, but that's our bed. This is our living space. We've been camping out in our van while we work on the place here. It's already been separating us, cutting us free from it. We're getting used to smaller space living when we get out on the road. So anyway, that's just a quick rundown on how we saved a bunch of money by going off the grid. And when I get a chance, I will do another video on whatever number three was. I can't remember, but I'll look it up on how we save money. So I hope you're enjoying the day. We've got beautiful spring weather here in Wisconsin. No mosquitoes yet. Wisconsin, this area has been known for mosquitoes. We don't have any yet, so we're rejoicing. The weather is beautiful. The nights are cool. The days are warm and breezy and... The Lord has opened up some awesome opportunities for us to get a lot of work done. So we're praising God in that. And anybody who has come here to buy anything that we've been trying to get rid of has gotten the gospel. In fact, today there was a wonderful witness. Um, a man came to pick something up and Jim was talking to him and Jim dug out a gospel track and he said, here, I want to give this to you. And the man took the gospel track. He sat down, he looked at Jim and he goes, you know, I'm 78 years old. I've been thinking about my life and how fast it's going to end. And Jim had a wonderful opportunity to witness. So even though we're here working on our place, God is sending people to get the gospel. And there have been many people here that have gotten the gospel. So praise God for that. We're busy in many different ways. So until next time, I hope you have a joyous evening, sisters. May God be praised.